in the name of Jesus. And if you pray about an hour, you'll get a word for yourself. You won't have to ask Pastor Rena every week. I'm not telling you you shouldn't ask Pastor Rena, but I'm telling you, you'll get a word because this book's full. And anything you read, he can quote at the right time when you need to hear it. And if, it's, and if, it, if he gives you a word that you can't find in here, there are principles in here. It'll be connected to Scripture and it'll help deliver you. You know, I was thinking about sickness this week, which has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. But I was thinking of medicine and sickness. And you know, when you go to the doctor, I realize that you don't want to do all the things they tell you, but I'm just going to kind of glance, glass over that for a minute. It's not the doctor that keeps you from getting healed, it's unbelief. So before you go blaming everybody but, but yourself, check it out. It's unbelief that'll, that'll keep you sick. Yes. Hallelujah. The doctor really can't stop God's power. I don't care what he does. Right. Unless he can convince you. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, I've watched people negotiate with a doctor, and they weren't trying to convince the doctor. They was trying to convince himself. Right. Right. They thought if they convinced themselves, he'd believe them. Faith don't care what anybody says. Because faith has it. Yes. And it's a matter of manifestation. Faith has it first. Amen. Amen. Oh, that was just a couple amens. <laughs> Amen. What would you do without faith? What would you do with your life without faith? You know, we all like I said we do things, and I'm I don't want to do things. It's it's like if you're if you're attending here. You know, I know you're here uh, because you want to be, because you nobody ever makes you come. But you need to start asking God why you're here, what you're doing here, what what your connection is. Uh, I, I'm big on why. How many of you ask? I ask God more questions. He probably gets tired of hearing me. I'm like that woman that keeps asking the judge, you know, because I, I, I ask God questions. I, I wake up in the morning and I worship him some. And then I, God, I, I go, God, I don't understand that. Can you tell me what really happened there so I understand what's going on rather than me try to figure it out? Anybody do that? I hope you do because he knows. And he'll explain situations to me and help me understand uh, things that I don't know. Because let's face it, in life, you know, you don't even know why people are the way they are. I mean, people will drive you crazy because they've got strongholds in their life and you don't know what to do with them. Today, there's going to be some separation. Spirit, soul, and body. God can separate the joints and the marrow. That's how powerful His, His Word is. So if you've got stuff in your veins that does not belong in there from a generational curse. May it be broken this morning. In the name of Jesus, may the power of that cross, the death of burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ represents victory to you in your life today. May the generational curses be broken in you and in your family. In the name of Jesus this morning. Amen. Well, obviously this is the season that they celebrated the Passover and uh, the feast is in Exodus. You know, it's a feast. When you get passed over, whoa, when you had punishment coming and you get passed over, you should celebrate. We should celebrate every day because every day we could have been punished and the, because of his atonement and his crucifixion, you are passed over every day. Every day of your life, you are passed over because he made the ultimate Sacrifice, and he said, it's finished. He says, if you abide in me and, you, and I abide in you, my God. It's in the abiding. It's not in your performance. 
It's in your abiding. Are you stuck and can't stop a horrible habit of sin? Is it just criticism of people? Is it hatred because you hate yourself that you hate somebody else? Are you bound to a sexual sin? Are you bound to things? You know, Self-hatred is rough. Makes you mean and hateful. Don't flinch. How many of you break stuff for your own? It's valuable because you hate yourself when you're angry. It's like you inflict more pain on your life because you hate yourself. The devil, he, he truly has a scheming way of trapping you. But Jesus defeated the devil. It's all in who you want to believe will determine how you live. As your faith be it unto you. Don't blame anybody sitting next to you for anything. You have the life that you have because of you, not because of them. That's right. That's right. You will be held accountable. I was just talking to somebody about marriage a few minutes ago, and those of you that have been married twice or whatever, I'm not going to get into that. That doesn't matter right now. You know when you all stand before God, we're not going to have marriage or given marriage in heaven. Everybody will stand alone on their own, what they did, no matter how many wives they had or didn't have. You'll stand before God and give an account. Marriage won't be there. Right. You ought to thank God for marriage because it helps you fly right down here. Yeah. Without it, it, it I, I mean, without covenant, we don't have the character. We need something stronger than us. Right. You've got to have a covenant. It's, what, it's the strength of your life right. is the covenants that you have. You're supposed to have a covenant with this house. And the leadership. You're supposed to have a covenant with your husbands, and your wives. You, you have a covenant agreements at work, whether you believe it or not. If you signed an employment contract, you have a covenant you have to keep. You've heard me say this before. All them loan contracts, they was covenants, baby. Right. That's what they were. If you thought about them as covenants, you might not sign so many. Right. If you thought of them as covenants, you might not sign all them credit apps. Because you just pledged your loyalty and your faithfulness. And how many pledges can one person make in life and keep them? How many best friends can you have? You can only keep so many pledges. And you have to decide how many you're capable. Isn't it funny? Self-examination is good for you. But most of the time we blame everybody else because we don't want to look at ourselves. So we do exactly what the, the original sin. It was the woman, I tell you. No, 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 no. It was the snake. It was his idea. Deferral. I'm sure there's a psychological term for that. I didn't go to school, so I don't know what it is, but I watch it happen enough to know what it is. Where you just defer everything to somebody else as if they were in charge of your destiny. Hallelujah. David's wife never stopped him from succeeding. Don't you be blaming your mate. She couldn't stand his relationship with God because he loved God. She called him base. He was just in love with God. And she wasn't. Isn't it funny how you can live in the same house with such a controversy? Don't you switch on God. He's the only way out. Please forgive me. I watch Westerns, but that's like giving up your guns. And, you know, you, you give up God. You've just given up your, your weapons. <laughs> you, just, you just relinquished your, your guns and rifles and the cannons and whatever it is you need because you have just gave them up for compromise to get along. Don't pick fights, but never compromise your faith to get along with anybody. If you don't want to fight, walk away, but don't compromise. Because every time you compromise, you weaken yourself. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Having done all to the stand, stand.
That's a word for somebody in here today. I've told you this before. It's been a lot of years. Maybe it hasn't. I don't know. You know, it's just all I got is my stories. You know, I'm a rehearser of victories. I'm sorry, but if I repeat things, it's kind of like saying the Lord healed me. If you got healed and you had a cancer, you'll say it over and over again. You don't care what anybody thinks. The life I now live, God gave me. I had no life. So I'm not ashamed to say those things. I'm not ashamed of whom I believe. You know, many years ago, uh, when Maria and I had lots of marital issues, and my mother wasn't, didn't know much. She was Catholic. And I'm not on Catholicism. T to be honest with you, I'm not even sure my mother could ever accept that I was a preacher. She never talked about it, never mentioned it. Like she couldn't accept that I was a preacher almost because of the fortress of what she had about religion. But she's in heaven, the Lord told me. She believed, you know. And, and my sister uh, wasn't serving God. And my mother, my wife, and my sister told me in my kitchen in Morgantown, West Virginia, on top of Hope Gardens in the hill when I lived in that house, my sister said, you've lost your mind. You've gone crazy with God. Rena thought I lost my mind. My mother thought I was crazy. And I made a decision then. I said, I don't know what you all want to do to me. I don't care if you want to get rid of me. I ain't switching. Bad English, good theology. And I really believe with my whole heart that if I wouldn't have taken that stance, I would not be standing here talking to you on this very day. It was a pivotal point. And if you want a good fight, take a stance. You want a good fight? Pick a fight. Just take a stance. It'll come to you. I always tell people, you don't have to go attack the devil. Just live. You'll run into him. Those people go, I'm going to, I'm thinking, you're crazy. Pick a fight. I'm picking no fights I don't need. I got, they come and I fight them. But if you think I'm going out like a Saturday night looking for a fight with the devil, you're crazy. I have to know I have a purpose and a reason. Because if you give me a reason, yep, we'll fight. But if I don't have a reason, I'm not going around picking them. You, you live for Jesus, you'll have enough problems to navigate through. But I promise you, you can win every single one. By faith and patience, you inherit the promises of God. That stance made my wife a preacher, you could say. I didn't say, but I did. The stance ran the devil out of the house. Are you, do you understand? You know, I remember anointing all my doors with oil when I started to catch on a little bit, you know. And I said, no evil shall enter my house ever again. Whole bunch of people quit coming over. <laughs> I didn't have to tell them, you know. You know, people go, how do I get rid of your house? You say, I thank you. Talk. Your tongue. Your tongue's the rudder of your life. You put oil above them doors say, I thank you, God. No plagues come nigh my dwelling. No evil shall enter my house in the name of Jesus. In my house is peace. In my house is prosperity. God abides in my house with me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll preach here a little bit, but we're just, we're just talking now. I have so many testimonies. I don't know. I, I mean, they were so good. Every one of them taught me something. And, and see, with those testimonies, I've got weapons back here. I've got weapons down here. I've got weapons back here. Loaded. Loaded. And I'm sure he's got some better ones as I go. You're well able to take the land, Joshua. You're well able to take the land, Caleb. Don't draw back in unbelief and get peace with Egypt so you don't have to fight. If you go for comfort, you won't hit your cause. 
you'll run into fights. When, you're, when the chains are breaking and the, the God is taking you out of captivity, you'll run into Grandpa's devil, Aunt Betty's, your last husband's, your mama's. You know, you've got to be brave to admit all that's true or you, so you can get out. It takes guts to say, i got a demon in my lineage that is vexing me and I'm going to run the same pattern my parents did if I don't get it. That, do you realize what, I'm going to touch that for just a minute. Do you realize how much maturity it takes to love your mom and daddy and honor them because they didn't know how to get free and you can't see, what it does, you take ownership of the devil and you can't blame them because they don't know what you know. And you got to honor them knowing that it came through them and it's all right. You know you didn't raise me right. You know you didn't treat me right. Well, now that you know that, you can do something about it. My goodness. You could blame everybody for everything if you wanted to. Everybody. My dad took me to play numbers and drank beer. I went to the beer garden with him. I still love my dad. If he was here, I'd defend him. I'm sorry. It was what it was. That's how I was raised. He was an iron worker, traveled, climbed bridges. They all drank. He didn't drink when he got older, but that's, that's what his deal was. He had to work through that. But he was still my dad while he was working through it. You, you hear me? See, where is that? Where, that's that covenant stuff we're talking about. That's that loyalty and faithfulness to people that God puts in your life that you're supposed to be connected to. Now, I ain't pushing abuse. Forgive my English. You get abused, do something about it. Right now, do something about it. And I mean that. I do not, I believe in protection, pr protect them, especially kids. That's why they're called kids and you're the adult. You're, so, you're, you're the one that's supposed to protect those kids. It's your responsibility, it is your job. That is your responsibility. You will be held accountable for that. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit everywhere, but I'm not. I'm not ashamed to throw anybody out of my house. And I hate to say, I'm not ashamed to throw anybody out of here if I have to. <laughs> you laugh. But God holds you accountable for what goes on in the house. Does this make any sense to you today? Hallelujah. Some of you guys that can't get a hold of your house, anoint them doors. Tell the devil to stay outside even when the people come in. Tell them, you can't enter my house, it's my house. It's not only my house in the spirit, my name's on the deed at the, at the courthouse. So it's my house. I legally, in the spirit and in the natural, am the owner of this house. I command you, in the name of Jesus, open the door and say, get out. In Jesus' name, get out of my house. Quit vexing my wife and my kids. In the name of Jesus, get out of my house. You know, if you don't understand dominion, this, this is, listen to what I just said. That was dominion. If you don't understand dominion, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. Bad and worse. Get out of my house. In Jesus' name. I command you, spear of adultery, get out of my house. In the name of Jesus. Drug addiction, get out of my house. In Jesus' name. You're supposed to be the stronger man. When a stronger man comes, he throws out the other one. Jesus is the strongest man in your life. And you're his. Go for my children. In the name of Jesus. I bind you, devil. In Jesus' name. If you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, that's the number one priority because you got to pray because when you got them problems, you don't know what to pray. In the name of Jesus. And if you pray about an hour, you'll get a word for yourself. You won't have to ask Pastor Rena every week. I'm not telling you you shouldn't ask Pastor Rena, but I'm telling you, you'll get a word because this book's full and anything you read, he can quote at the right time when you need to hear it. And if, it's, and if, it, if he gives you a word that you can't find in here, there are principles in here. 
It'll be connected to Scripture, and it'll help deliver you. He'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you to do something. Boy, I'm, I, just, I just throw these notes out today. Maybe we'll preach them next service. That's one thing about two services. You really don't know what's going to happen all the time. <laughs> if you're not fighting, maybe you don't have anything wrong in your life. I've always had a fight. Even if I was fighting myself. You, you, you know, that's the biggest enemy you got is you. And you know that thing I always say, if you can tell yourself what to do, you're bad, man. It's the, anybody can tell everybody else what to do, but if you can tell yourself what to do, whoa, you, you are something. Quit eating that food. That's no good for you. You gonna listen to me? <laughs> I'm telling you, stop it. <laughs> if you can tell yourself what to do, Hallelujah. You can live from the inside out. Your belly out, not your head. Your head tells you what not to do. If you tithe, you won't have enough money. The scripture says if you tithe, you're, you don't tithe, you're stealing. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to go on tithing. But I will say this because I talked about it last night. Don't tithe in fear. If you're tithing in fear, you're not going to get the same promise that you tithe in faith. God keeps his word. It doesn't matter what he tells you to do. He just don't lie. Like if he was going to believe anybody, you ought to believe him. Like if he was gonna, actually going to believe, and we'll believe salesmen, we'll believe everybody, but God. You'll, somebody will get you all, have you, oh, don't flinch. How many of you got, somebody told you something, you got all stirred up, and you said, oh, I'll kill them, and it wasn't even true. You had all them emotions for nothing. Because you believed them. You believed them. If you believe God, the way you believe those evil reports, it's like the dreams. God gives you dreams. I, I'm going to touch this for a minute. If you get a dream that somebody's going to die, I, I've had people tell me that. If you accept that, that that's the way that has to be because you had a dream, I think you're wrong. I heard the God know this going to, he's going to die. Joseph, being warned in a dream, went a different way. And Jesus did not get killed. I have a guy who had a dream that his, his daddy died. And I told him, go to, to tell your dad, go to the doctor. He got stents put in, and it's five years ago, and he ain't dead. See, we finalize, oh, that's the, God said it. God warned you. No action steps, you're going to... Didn't have to die. He's not dead. He's playing with his grandkids. He went to the doctor. He said, he's, he's feeling winded. I said, take him to the doctor. The guy doesn't know about healing and all that stuff. It didn't mean God can't help. See, don't limit God. Don't tell people they don't have enough faith. Let, help them have enough faith to do what they got faith to do. You can't take them from A to Z. Take them from A to B. They'll live and then they'll have time to learn about Z. But if they die before you're right, you, that's, you just got to believe God for everything. I'm thinking, come on, find out where they are and take them from there. If you don't, it's the same old thing. If you don't ask any questions, you won't know where they are. If you're too busy trying to shove your belief system on somebody, you won't ask any questions. Questions is a sign you care about them and you're gonna locate them and you're taking the time out of your life to locate them so you can help them. But you, this, Christians try to shove on the world everything and they never ask the world a question. Like, how are you? You know what you don't know? God wants you healed. I don't know that. I don't know nothing about that. But if you said, hey, man, how you doing? You struggling with that, are you? You going to the doctor? What are they telling you? Inter interaction with them so they know that you actually think they're a human being instead of telling them what they don't know. If you talk without asking you, you're really not going to get much done. 
And anybody in here that's ever sold anything for a living knows exactly what I just said. Remember, I'm a 30-year salesman. Shut up and buy this car. That'd get me a lot of car deals. <laughs> buy this car because I said so. You should believe it because I said it. We do that to people in the world. We think the way they should get saved. You don't do that. What do you need? How many kids you got? You need a car seat? You need a back seat? You need a third seat? You, 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 have, and just, you ask questions because you really actually want to help them. You can't force your belief system on them. You have to, you have to ask. All that making sense? Anyway, Passover. Two minutes to go for the Passover. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm in a two-minute warning. Do I got enough points to win today? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Did we go far enough to win? Amen. I'll just touch it in Exodus 13, 3. Remember the day in which you came out of Egypt. God, by his great power, delivered the Israelites from an enemy that was too strong for them. Death was too strong for you. You couldn't deliver yourself from death. Jesus came and delivered you from death. He defeated your biggest enemy. Surely you can trust him with the rest of the causes. Because he defeated the one that you couldn't do a thing about. If you can trust him with your life eternally, surely you can trust him with everything else. I'm going to close with this. If you could understand that, that seems so simple. He will deliver you. For he will deliver you from your enemies. And he will make you the head and not the tail. Because that's what he said. Not because you're so cool. Not because you did everything right. Not because you didn't have any bad days. Because he's faithful. And he loves you. And if you'll cooperate with what he said, it gives him a legal avenue to do what he said. And that's what you want to do. Because he can't override your will to deliver you. But if you cooperate, you give him a highway that he can ride on to do everything he promised. Let's stand to our feet. Father, we are so grateful. You, Jesus, became the Passover lamb for everything we ever did in humanity. He covered it all in one event. From beginning to end, deliverance became available to all men by your son's death on the cross. Jesus, Thank you for going to the cross and literally taking the punishment that we deserve, God. We probably still deserve more because we're still here and we still do things wrong. But you covered it from everything we did and everything we're going to do has been covered on that day. And you said it's finished.